Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Deanna. I am the owner of D-Series Boutique as well as the Facebook group Tumblr Tutors. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make one of my best selling cups, this absolutely gorgeous reverse ombre peekaboo. And as always, I will have all of the materials that I'm using as well as the files linked in the description below, as well as some discount codes for you guys to enjoy. So let's get into it. mask from CCDIY, my gloves. I'm going in with black and rustic pink Rust-Oleum. It is really cold outside today, so I'm spray painting in my garage. I want to make sure I mix them up really, really well. Starting off with my rustic pink Rust-Oleum, making sure I've got a really good full coverage bottom. I want to make sure that I've got a full coverage bottom because the glitter that we're using is a little bit translucent and I want to make sure that it doesn't have any silver coming through. Next up, we're going in with our black spray paint. I don't need this as much as I need the pink, just because the black glitter won't be showing any silver through it. I just want to know where my ombre is supposed to be. So I'm going in and kind of softening that middle line. That is where my ombre is going to be. It does not have to be perfect, just because it's going to be covered up mostly by the glitter. But it's just, it's just to help me as a guide to know where to start my ombre and where it needs to be. So now that that's all dry, I'm going to go in with my epoxy CC DIY facet, doing 2.5 mLs of part B and 2.5 mLs of part A, and I'm just gonna start whipping that up. This does not have to be completely bubbleless. It is not going to be a cover coat. This is just going to be our adhesive for our glitter. Our glitter is going to go over it. I do want to make sure I mix it really thoroughly, really well, getting the sidewalls and getting everything nice and mixed well. But it does not have to be perfectly bubbleless and, you know, anything like that. It's just our adhesive. So now I'm making sure I have my crafty cow stand and I'm going to start putting my epoxy on just a little bit and a little goes a long way. We're going to make sure that we smooth a thin layer all over our cup. This layer should be so thin that you should be able to put your cup upside down and have no epoxy dripping down. It should stay in its place because it is such a thin layer. You do wanna make sure that you smooth it out really, really well and make sure that you've got full coverage. It should be a little bit hard to drag the epoxy. It should be kind of giving you a little bit of resistance and Again, we just want a very, very thin layer. Next up, I'm going in with Premium Rose Gold from Backfist Customs. And I'm going to make sure that I've got a very full coverage bottom, making sure that I get that bottom edge really, really well. And then I'm going in really, really heavy on all the places that I know are not going to be a part of my ombre. Just going to be that middle section that I'm ombreing. So because I'm doing black on the top half, I want to make sure I've got really, really, really thick layer of that glitter on the bottom to make sure the black does not go into my lighter color. And this is where I'm going to start my ombre. I'm going to tilt my cup and I'm going to start shaking just a little bit at a time and I'm going to let the glitter fall as it may. I'm going to make sure it doesn't go too far into the black. I just want it to fall and sprinkle down. This is gonna be our transition between our pink and our black. Now I'm going in with a mix of Chunky Atlanta Nights and regular Atlanta Nights from Backfist Customs as well. And I'm making sure to start off on the top edge, making sure I've got really good full coverage. Same thing as the pink, making sure I do a nice thick layer. And of course my big old hand is in the way, so you can't really see it too well, but I am just kind of shaking from side to side the glitter jar just to make sure that I'm only putting out a tiny bit of glitter at a time and I've got my cup angled and I am just sprinkling it ever so lightly into the middle where our ombre is going to be. 
and here you can see that again I only did it just slightly into our pink now I'm going in with our pink glitter again and I'm going to be softening the line but I'm going to be going kind of crazy in the words of Jessica Flynn we are letting it rip here with our pink Next, we're going to be going back in with our black because you see that our epoxy has kind of soaked up some of it. So we are going to go back in and make sure that we don't have any soaked through glitter. It will look a little bit like an oil slick. So I stopped here and I looked at it and realized that my ombre was a little bit heavier on the pink. So I went in with a little bit more black to soften it up even more. And she came out pretty. Next up, I am laying down some parchment paper and I'm going to put our cup on the edge, just being very careful because that fast setting epoxy is still wet. And I'm just going to give her a nice tight little roll and rub. Now I do this because the glitter that we're using is chunky and this is gonna help us lay that chunky down flat so that when we epoxy, it should be nice and smooth and we won't have to do multiple layers of epoxy. But you can't forget that bottom edge. So I'm just going to go in and tap it down, making sure that all of the glitter is laid nicely. Now we're gonna let her sit on our crafty cow and cure. Now that we're all cured, I'm going to go ahead and place a piece of scrapbook paper underneath and use my fluffy brush to dust off any excess glitter. I got this brush from Shein. I think I'm saying that right. Shein. Um, it was like $2 and it was worth every single penny. Honestly, I, I would have paid more. But really, any fluffy brush will get the job done. So now I'm going in with some more of CCDIY's Fast Setting Epoxy. I'm going to be going in with 30 mLs. It's going to be 15 mLs of Part B and then 15 mLs of Part A. I always put my Part B in first. And the reason why I do that is because Part B is the thinner part and Part A is the thicker part. So when I put Part B in first, Part A goes in sinks into part B and it evens out at the line faster whereas if I did it opposite if I did part A first it would just sit there and part B would sit on top of it and it would take a little bit longer for it to settle to the line um, also when I put part A into part B it gets the mixing going a little bit faster so once again, I'm making sure that I'm getting a really good mix. I don't see any of those little streaks in my epoxy. I'm making sure to scrape the sides of my cup and I'm making sure that I scrape the bottom really well. I'm making sure that I take the any extra epoxy off of my stick and mixing that into my cup as well. All of this will help ensure that our epoxy is well blended and ready to go on our cup and cure properly. Now I'm going to start applying my epoxy. I'm going to go a little bit at a time and I'm going to kind of separate it out by color. So you'll notice that I'm only doing the part that is strictly pink. I'm not really touching the ombre section yet and the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I want to make sure that the black has no travel. Even though we dusted off the excess glitter, we're still gonna be able to have some glitter transfer if we start rubbing the epoxy up and down. So I'm going to focus on just the pink and then I'll focus on just the black. Anywhere that it's ombre, I'm going to be moving my hand side to side. I'm not gonna be doing up and down. So I'll do all the black and then I'll come down the ombre and I will move my hand sideways across it. And something else I don't want you to forget about is your top and bottom edges. We already got the bottom, but I want you to go ahead and give it the top edge a couple taps as it turns to make sure that you've got epoxy all the way up to that top edge. Once we are sanding, we'll go ahead and clean that epoxy edge up but for right now, just make sure that it is fully epoxied. Next up, we're gonna take our torch and we're gonna pop all those little micro bubbles. It's so cool, you can see them popping in the video and that is going to help us have a beautiful coat. 
So after we've let that spin and our epoxy is done curing, what we're going to do is we are going to clean up that top edge. Everywhere that the epoxy got on the top edge of the cup, we're gonna go ahead and take it off with an X-Acto knife. And then I'm gonna go around the outside, the outer edge of that rim just a little bit. I'm gonna expose a little bit more stainless steel it's going to help us when we go to sand it to get a nice exposed line at the top of the cup. Now I'm going in with my 220 grit sandpaper. I'm wrapping it around my little sand block here and I'm just going to go around the entire cup and any lumps and bumps from that chunky glitter we're going to go ahead and sand it down to make sure everything is nice and smooth because the next step is spray paint and we don't want any lumps or bumps because it will show through the paint so you got to make sure everything is nice and smooth let's also not forget the bottom of our cup we want everything to be nice and smooth and i'll show you guys in just a moment how i get a nice smooth corner edge but first we're going to get this top I'm going to sand down a little bit further on this layer than I normally would, just so that when we sand down our painted layer, we won't be able to see any glitter underneath. This is just gonna help us prevent sanding down too far and exposing that glitter. And I didn't forget the butt. I take my sandpaper, I cup the bottom of the cup, and I twist until smooth. Now that we're done sanding, I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to clean the cup, take off all of that sanding dust, and make it nice and pretty and clean for our vinyl. So I cut my design on some random piece of vinyl I had laying around. It doesn't matter the color, just because we're gonna be spray painting over it anyway, since we are doing a peekaboo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and weed it real quickly, just taking out all of those little middle pieces of the leopard and getting it ready to place on. Now I'm gonna start weeding out the mama design. For this part with the paint, we are going to peel off all of the letters. We're gonna leave on the pieces that we want to be glitter and all the pieces that we want to have our paint showing, we are going to take off. I went ahead and cut the mama design out from the rest of our design so I can put some transfer tape on it without having to worry about picking up any of the little leopards or anything like that. This way it's also easier to place the vinyl. Now I pull out my handy dandy cup cradle from Kale Bell Customs to help my cup not roll away while I am trying to place my vinyl. I got it down pretty easy, just peeling off that transfer tape really quickly. And now it's time to start placing our leopard. There's no real method to my madness here. I try to place the larger leopard prints kind of sporadically throughout the cup and then fit the smaller ones in just where they where they look like they fit well but just go with your own flow here if you choose to do this design and you decide that you want to do this whole vinyl process in a full wrap go with it i make this cup very often but i like the idea that by doing this even though i make a lot of them every single one of them is one of a kind I saved you guys in the super long vinyl process. <laughs> and next up is spray paint. So I am going in with my black Rust-Oleum once again, and the black Rust-Oleum this time is going on the bottom. And I'm just gonna work up to where I meet the black glitter. That is going to be my middle point. That's gonna be where I ombre my spray paint. Now I'm going in with my Rust-Oleum Rustic Pink, and I'm just doing the same thing, making sure I get co full coverage around the top edge, and then bringing it to where I meet my black spray paint now. And I'm going to start my ombre. I'm just going to soften the lines a little bit, going back and forth between a dusting of black and a dusting of pink until I am happy with the ombre. A lot of times what I'll do is make sure that I'm happy with the pink and if I've got some little pink spots on the black, I'll just do a spot clean on the black. And there we have it, a beautiful spray paint ombre. So now that we have let our spray paint 
completely dry. I'm going to go in with a weeding tool. I'm just using this like Cricut brand one, actually maybe Hobby Lobby like, Paper Studio brand. But I like using this instead of like a weeding pen for this. Because there is a pretty thick layer of paint on there and because the vinyl we just have to get through a lot and i don't want to have to push really really hard on it i i don't want to scratch the paint if we scratch the paint on this it's going to be so hard to fix because of that ombre so i just want to make sure that i'm using a really strong tool to pull these vinyl pieces up and i just make sure that i have every single vinyl piece up to make sure that there are no weird spots when we go to epoxy later on. Next, I'm gonna start pulling the Mama design. We are gonna pull every single piece of this vinyl off of this cup, you guys, every single piece. Like I said, just be careful that you are not scratching the paint. Take your time, work it really easy, I know those little lines in the lightning bolt look like they're paint, but they're not. Those are vinyl. Just take your time and pull it up little by little. And this is what it should look like right before epoxy. So now I'm mixing up some more of CCDIY's Fast Setting Epoxy. I'm doing 20 mLs this time because we are not going over glitter, we're going over our spray paint. Just going on, just as normal, top to bottom, regular epoxy coat. We do want to make sure that this is smooth and no lumps or bumps, so make sure that you're smoothing out all of the lines that you're making with your hand. Once again, we are going back in with our torch and we're making sure that we do not have any micro bubbles in our epoxy. And once again, we have a beautiful smooth epoxy cup, which means we are once again cleaning that rim. You guys, it is so important to clean your rims in between every coat of epoxy. That way at the end, you don't have a big clumpy mess. And you also don't wanna have a big thick ledge at the top of your cup of epoxy that was just recently trimmed. You wanna have a nice smooth transition. It's another reason why we're going around the top of the cup and cleaning up that top edge to expose that stainless steel once again. And you'll see this time I'm not going as far down as I did on the epoxy over the glitter layer. I'm just giving it a little bit. I don't want to expose any of the glitter layer, just giving it a little bit of an edge. And then we're just going to clean that up with a paper towel. Now that I've got the file in Solid Studio, I'm going to make a copy of the mama part. I'm going to release the compound path and change it to clear so it's easier to see. Then I'm going to select the entire center of the file and I am going to make a compound path again. Move it off to the side. And now I'm going to go to my offset panel and I'm going to put a 0 0.05 offset on it. I'm going to apply it. Then I'm going to come over and for the meltdown part, I'm going to select just that one and make it a compound path and the same thing for just the manager part. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just so it's a little bit easier to see and I'm going to select the meltdown part and I'm going to position it in that space right there just to make sure that it fits really well. I'm just going to kind of move it around until it works for me. Then I'm going to go in and do the same thing with the manager part, but this one's a little bit different. It does need to be adjusted. I put it down a little bit further and then I'm going to shrink it in on the sides just a tiny bit to make sure that the M and the R are not touching that offset. Now I'm going to select a couple of my leopard pieces. You can pick whichever leopards that you like. I'm going to make a copy of it and then I'm going to add that same 0 0.05 offset to those leopard pieces as well. Just make sure that when you are doing this that you separate your leopard pieces out a little bit further apart so that when you do your offset they are not stuck together. 
And now here is where the design really starts to come together. We are placing our vinyl offset. I went ahead and cut this out on my silhouette and right now I'm just going ahead and weeding all of the inside spaces of our offset. You'll see that little outline, that is our offset. I am using Cricut brand adhesive foil vinyl in the color rose gold. So just like before, I went ahead and removed the mama vinyl from the rest of the leopard print and I went ahead and threw some transfer tape on it and I'm just being very careful when removing that backing to make sure that I don't pull up any of those thin pieces of vinyl don't want to make a mess of it. I don't want to take off anything that is supposed to be there. Now I'm doing a little bit of a reverse weed just because these lines are so thin, you guys. It is so difficult to weed this, but they're so thin. So I'm just taking my time and I'm making sure that nothing is out of place. The best way to think about this when weeding it is that every edge that will be touching paint is going to stay. So the outside layer stays and then the next part of the circle would be the inside you peel that off. It can be a little bit difficult sometimes. Um, I still look at the picture of the first cup I ever made of this design just to try to remember exactly what stays and what goes. Now as far as layering this vinyl, I'm going to line up this piece right here with this piece right here. It is going to lay exactly on top of each other. And I'm also going to make sure that I'm lining up everywhere where the paint is. This decal should lay on top of the paint. And we're going to go ahead and smooth one side down and just take our time and place it down. And it should lay perfectly. Here I am making sure that my vinyl is laid down really well. When I pull up this transfer tape, I don't want any of those tiny little lines coming up with it. So just make sure that it's rubbed down really well. Now I'm just finishing up that reverse weeding, pulling all the little pieces that don't need to be there. Beautiful. Now we are doing the same thing with our leopard print. We are layering our vinyl on top of the corresponding leopard prints. And we are just going to go around the entire cup. What I like to do for this is look at what I have in my vinyl and kind of take my time and try to find it around the cup and just place it as best I can. If I feel like there are too many in one spot, I can go ahead and do another offset on a couple more pieces that I pick from the middle. So here I am just finishing up. I don't put them on every single one, just on a couple throughout the cup. Now because we're using metallic vinyl, I'm gonna go in with some quick coat from CCDIY. It is a urethane sealer, it takes about 10 minutes to dry but it's going to help our epoxy not repel over that smooth metallic vinyl. In my opinion, Quick Coat is a must have. It has completely changed my relationship with epoxy. And next up, our final coat of epoxy. Finally, I'm going in with 20 mLs of CCDIY's Artist Resin and just normal coat of epoxy, making sure it's nice and smooth. And once again, a full rotation with our torch to pop any micro bubbles that may have popped up. You'll really be able to see them over the metallic vinyl, so make sure that you use your torch. And here she is in all her beautiful glory. She came out so beautiful. I love this cup so much. Everybody loves this cup. It is gorgeous. Thanks so much for watching you guys. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at D Series Boutique. Also, feel free to join my community for makers, Tumblr Tutors on Facebook, linked in the description below. See you guys next time.